Before the 2001 release of Sonic Advance and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle for Nintendo's Game Boy Advance and GameCube respectively, Sega did find some time to release their titles for systems that weren't developed in-house. There's a fair few examples out there actually, but none are quite as bizarre as Sega's support of Tiger Electronics' R-Zone device. This was a portable system that contained a visor you strapped to your head which had a hardwired controller dangling off it that you used to interact with the software. It's an obvious response to Nintendo's own Virtual Boy and is probably a more successful product when it comes to portability, but the software itself basically amounted to their standard LCD titles being presented in a different format. You see, our zone games are reflected of a small plastic visor that folds out from the head mounted unit. It's a novel concept and it sort of works if you've also placed something dark behind the visor. This stops the graphics from becoming washed out and difficult to see. However, if you're a specky four eyes like me, it can actually be quite difficult to wear the thing with glasses as well. Sega actually supported the system quite well and released scaled down versions of Indy 500, Panzer Dragoon, Virtua Fighter, Virtua Fighter 2, Daytona USA and Virtua Cop. The games themselves are sold on little cartridges which have a translucent window on them. This is where the game's visuals would display and they're illuminated with red LEDs. This makes capturing footage of the games in action a bit challenging. You can see Daytona USA running fairly clearly here but the glare from the LEDs makes it a bit challenging to capture as you can see from our Virtua Cop footage. The games are extremely simplified when compared to their arcade equivalents. Daytona USA is your standard LCD driving game with three lanes that you can move in and out of, with the main goal being to avoid other races and walls which your car is drawn to on corners. It's an extremely unresponsive game and accelerating has been ludicrously mapped to the up on the D-pad. Virtua Cop features a 4x4 grid which you can move your reticule around and fire at enemies that appear in the four spaces. You fire with one button and reload with another, a simple setup for a simple game. This one actually plays a lot better, but it's a bit on the easy side which means you're unlikely to stick with it for very long. And that's really the problem with the R-Zone. All the software is based on those extremely simplistic LCD titles that never held your attention for longer than 5 minutes, and it's exactly the same here. It's certainly an interesting little footnote in the history of Sega and handheld gaming, but it's not one I'd recommend, especially for the asking prices that R-Zone systems and software go for nowadays.